Hi everybody, Paul Cameron here from SpeedUpMyJobSearch.com with a clip from our monthly Jobs Driven Networking Group, which meets in Wheaton, Illinois, every third Thursday. Let's take a look. Paul, well, thank you. Gray Hair Management has been around for 21 years. Uh, I did found it, and what we do is we partner with our clients who have difficulty articulating their value or their currency to potential employers, or they understand the value of networking, but have never made it really work for themselves, or they even have interviews, but they come in second or third place. And you know, what I've learned about interviews is if you don't finish first, you don't even get a ribbon. You don't get to stand on the podium and say, I won. And so basically, that's what we do with clients. And we formed uh, gray hair management, and we've learned over the years that there are specific rules you may want to follow as it relates to networking. Here are some facts. Number one, there's an 85% chance that your next job will come from someone you know. However, it may not mean anyone you know today. It may mean someone you know as you go down this journey, somebody you meet. Second thing to think about is 72% of the people hired are known to the company in advance. Uh, for example, referrals or somebody, a friend who, who refers you in. But I'm sure some of you have gone for a job and the answer you get after a while, after interviewing is we've decided to go with somebody within the company. That's part of that 72%. But that doesn't mean that person inside the company was any more qualified than you. What it really means is I don't have to train the new person how to do the job. I don't have to teach them the culture of the company. And if I'm lucky, I'll get that person not only to do the new job, but the old job as well. So that's part of that 72% are known to the company in advance. And not wanting to depress anybody, but your next job will only be 1.8 to three years. So it's important to realize that the whole landscape of working today has come down to short stints. Not necessarily contract work, which is part of this, but full-time employment that on average only lasts between 1.8 and three years. So if you're not gonna retire on your next position, my suggestion is you're going, or my what's gonna happen is you're gonna do this again. So be prepared and learn along the way. So the next thing we wanna work on is the elevator speech. The first 15 seconds are the most important. Now, I know that I've gone to a lot of networking meetings where they say to you, okay, stand up and take two minutes to tell us your elevator speech. Well, I gotta tell you something. Uh, I used to be in the television commercial business where I would produce commercials that were 30 seconds long. And I will tell you that if I can't motivate somebody to do something in 30 seconds, taking two minutes is not gonna work either. And the thing to remember about a two minute elevator speech is most people won't remember what you told them. They may remember the last thing about your speech, but there's no reason to spend that much time because most people have an attention span of 20 seconds. And so if you have a two minute elevator speech, you can't, you have to almost be in the Sears Tower to use it. So I would recommend that think of the elevator speech as a 15 second piece. And remember, it doesn't have to tell your life story. It just has to start a conversation. And so you wanna make it unique so that the other party wants to hear more because you want to get in the conversation. It must be focused. Now, what I've learned is that no matter how smart the person you're talking to is, if you don't tell them what you want, they'll never be able to help you. So it's extremely important that your elevator speech talks about what you need. Think of it as a 30 second commercial. Who am I? What do I do? What am I looking for? And how can you help me? Now there's one more element you want to meet, might want to put there, and that is, here's how I can help you. 
because networking is a two 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 way street. And you have to really practice it. I would recommend that you write it down, write it out. And, and I will tell you that 30 seconds is 75 words. Create 75 words that are going to make that person ask you, what is it that you do? Tell me more. And that's the conversation. And from there, from there, you can then say, who else should I be talking to? Or how can I help you? Your elevator speech has to resound with them so that they think about how you can help them. It's because it's not about you. It's always about them. Whether you're talking 15 seconds or three minutes, it's always about them. Let me show you some branding statements that we've worked with on our clients. For example, we have a reputation builder. What is a reputation builder? Well, that's someone who helps organizations build strong relationships and stakeholder value. That's somebody in sales or somebody in marketing, for example. Uh, a customer keeper, definitely somebody in sales. Focusing on customer retention to increase bottom line performance. Or maybe you're a safe cracker. Uh, what is a safe cracker? Now I have to tell you, the person who uses this phrase um, has this so well prepared that he pauses when he says, and he stands up in his elevator speech and he says, I'm a safe cracker. And he waits and he looks for the expressions and he says, oh, maybe some of you think I'm a felon. Well, that actually I'm not, I'm in marketing. And I unlock the wealth between customers and products through marketing. Now, I have to tell you that when Charlie stands up and says he's a safe cracker, I will tell you that many, many people may not remember his name, but they will never forget the phrase safe cracker for him. So what we're trying to do here is create some attention, create a discussion so that you're involved in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I want to tell you a little story about the branding. There's a group in Chicago called the Executives Club, um, which is a which is generally a um, a group of CEOs and very large corporate management people. I don't I, I've never been able to cross over the bar, and it's very expensive. And I don't I'm not a member. However, I had a friend who was a member, and every year they have a holiday party, and you pay $30, $35, and you can go to this party as long as you know a member. And so we would go and say, yeah, we know Chad, or whatever. And one of the prerequisites of getting into the party is you had to go through the receiving line and to meet the president and the secretary and the treasurer of the executives club. And so I would always go with friends uh, to this party, this holiday party, and they still have this party every year. And my friends would push me to the front of our group because they felt that I should be the spokesperson for some reason. It must be because I'm so timid. Anyway, um, I got up to the president of the executives club. His name was Jim Goodwin, who at the time was the CEO and president of United Airlines. Not a, not a bad person to meet. So I had my badge on and my badge says my name and it also has a line that says gray hair management. And I've come to realize that when people see that badge, almost almost to, to a soul, they say, what is gray hair management? And Mr. Goodwin did that. And he, he said, so what is gray hair management? I said, oh, I'm really glad you asked. I said, we help people get jobs. And while I know you've got a great gig, one of these days you're going to lose it. And he kind of looked at me strangely and, and it was that kind of a look that said, did I go through the metal detector before I got in line? You know, it was that kind of a expression and, and he just did not want to talk at that point. And so he pushed me down the line. He said, why don't you go meet the other people in the line? And so I did. And that was about the extent of it. So fast forward now a year 
and we have the same party, same 35 bucks, same lamb chops, same open bar, that kind of thing. And I got in the receiving line and Mr. Goodwin, now this was December, Mr. Goodman had lost his job in November. And I got in line, but he's still president of the executive club for another month. So I got in line and I walked up to him. And again, he said, gray hair management, because I was wearing my badge. And he said, gray hair management. He says, why do I know that name? I said, oh, well, you may recall we met last year and I told you you were going to lose your job. And look what happened. And he, and he looked at me, he says, you know, he said, you were right. He said, give me your card and I will put that on top of the pile. And I said, look, since you're out of work, now let me put a parenthesis. His out of work was a five year severance package with a million dollars a year, a secretary in an office. So I don't necessarily call that out of work, but it was a very nice package. And I said, but listen, since you're out of work, how about if we have a cup of coffee one day? He said, sure, call me. I said, I'm assuming you have a secretary. He said, yeah. I said, what's her name? And she said, he said, Helen. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, would you tell Helen I'm going to call because I know her job is to keep me from you. He said, I will do that Monday morning. I said, great. And on Monday afternoon I called and Helen put me right through and Jim Goodwin and I had several coffee and even lunches together. As you can meet anyone you want, as long as you can tell your story and start a conversation. I, I just want to say the, the, to point out to everybody, there's, there's an important element there that's probably just natural to you, which is what is you know, your, your assistant's name? And can you ask her to put me through because her job is to prevent me from getting to you? Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy smart. That's a, a very, uh, that's a great approach. Okay. Have well, I've used to, it. To do that. You have to, you, you have to realize the hurdles that are going to be placed in front of you to connect with anyone. And once you figure out a way to jump the hurdle, you're one step closer to making that connection. As Paul mentioned earlier on, we have, um, our book called winning the job race. It's an easy read. It's on Amazon. And now that John, John has, or not John, now that Paul has said um, he's going to put on his list, that's going to push us on, uh, on the Amazon um, number one list, uh, which I believe we're about at 175,600 right now, soon to be um, maybe 175,601. Who knows? I hope that was helpful for you. And please check out the rest of our YouTube channel for more tips and strategies to help you with your job search. Just look for speed up my job search, all one word, or use the link on your screen now. Now, if you'd like to join us at our next meeting, just go to drivestaff.com slash JDNG for details. Each month we cover a different aspect of networking to help you sharpen your networking skills and to help you build your network with the other attendees. Now, if the location or the time doesn't work for you, we do have an online version available as well, and you can still network with us in our online private member forum. I'd love to meet you at the next one, so I hope you can make it. Thanks for watching.